I arrived home on Friday evening thinking that after a hard week on the plane, I would be able to have a good time in the company of my pretty wife. Three more or less independent children live separately. We are after 22 years of marriage. Maybe we could go somewhere and have a nice evening. I walked into the kitchen from the garage and looked at the mail on the kitchen table. I heard a noise upstairs and then the sound of feet going down the steps. My attractive 45-year-old wife walked into the living room wearing a short robe that never failed to excite me whenever she put it on. Oh, she exclaimed, you're early. I, uh, I didn't expect you until an hour or so later. I looked at my watch and realized that I had arrived early, but it's not too early. What is this for? Where are we going? Well, I'm leaving. I don't know what you're doing. Okay. My weekend just went down the drain. What do you mean you're leaving? Where and with whom? Her gaze fell on a small bag of things standing at the end of the sofa. Um, I have a date with William Strathmore. This is for the weekend. I'll be home Sunday night, and we'll talk about it. What the hell did she just say? I thought, I need to finish getting ready. She turned and ran upstairs, and I heard the door slam. The fuck you're going to do this I said to myself. My first thought was that I needed reinforcements. I took out my mobile phone and dialed my daughter's number. I wasn't gonna be the bad guy because of what my wife said. Hello, daddy. What's the matter? She answered cheerfully. I grabbed her mother's purse and emptied the contents onto the coffee table. I need you to come here immediately. Your mother hurt her head and she needs us. I have to go, dad, dad. I heard hanging up my son received the same message with the addition. Call your brother and tell him to come here, fast. Dad, what the fuck but I ended the conversation. Then I quickly dialed her parents and said the same thing. They had the same confusion and a few screams when I passed out. Judith's purse spilled out the usual contents, credit cards, keys. 12 packs of Trojan condoms. I had a vasectomy and a copy of the confirmation email from the Marriott Hotel in Kenilworth, room 703 to 710. The fuck I thought, William Strathmore was one of the pediatric surgeons at her work. I've met him at a hospital Christmas party a few times over the five years, and the guy was slimy. And that was the best thing I could say about him. His wife was stunningly beautiful but I got the impression that she had problems with him. I confiscated credit cards and car keys, then I took the email and put it in my pocket just in case. I took my mobile phone and opened it. Her code was our anniversary date. Safety. Hey. She was still busy upstairs, so I pulled out the emergency list from her work and found this good doctor. His cell phone is not needed, but his home phone would help. I dialed it and after two rings, Someone answered, Oh, dear, I was waiting for your call. I don't recognize this number, though. Is everything okay? Is this Mrs. Strathmore? Yes, and who is it? This is David Collins. My wife is the head nurse at the hospital where your husband works. I don't know if you remember me. Yes, Dave. I remember. My husband and I were talking about you and your wife a couple of days ago. I was expecting a call from William when you called. What can I do for you? So your husband is not at home? No, he's in Boston at a surgical conference. Everything is fine. Look, Mrs. Strathmore, I don't know how to say this, but I don't think he's there. I had just had an argument with my wife, and she told me she was going to spend the weekend with him at the Marriott in Kenilworth which would end on Sunday evening. What? What are you speaking about? I think we are both being lied to. I have email confirmation to rent seven adjoining rooms on the seventh floor from today through Monday. I saved your number, Mr. Collins. Let me get back to you. I've had enough of this crap. I looked at the emergency call list and found the phone number of the hospital's director of health, Corinne Adams. I knew her. She and my wife were good friends. I knew her husband. He was a detective sergeant. I dialed her number. Almost immediately, she answered, Hello, who is this? Corinne, this is David Collins, Judith's husband. I heard a muffled, Oh, no, yes, Dave. What can I do for you? Definitely scared. 
I think there is some impropriety going on between Dr. Strathmore and my wife, and I wanted investigated and stopped. Sorry, Dave. I can't talk right now. I have to go. Click. Wow, that's weird. Almost immediately, Judith's cell phone rang. On the third ring, feeling my stomach churn, I answered the call. Without waiting for me to say anything, the caller began. Judith, he knows. He knows everything. What did you told him? And then I gave her shit not all, Corinne, but gradually, I find out. The shrill sigh on the other end of the line was very instructive. Goodbye. Click I immediately found her home phone number and dialed it. Four rings and a man answered. Look, I don't want to upgrade my cable service. Jerry, looks like you've had a bad day. Who is this? Dave Collins. Judith's husband. Yes, nothing but sales calls and spam. What's the matter, Dave? Uh, is Corinne home? No, I'm babysitting the kids this weekend. Corinne at a hospital-sponsored team-building weekend in Philadelphia. Why do you ask? I took a deep breath and told him everything I had learned and suspected. And I suspect that it's not just the three of them involved. Seven hotel rooms. There was silence on the other end of the line. Are you thinking about the same thing as me? I don't know what I'm thinking about, but I know one thing. Judith won't leave here tonight. Even if I end up in jail, I'll contact you if I find out anything. Don't do anything stupid. Jerry was a cop, and I could hear the wheels turning. Judith then walked down the stairs looking like an expensive call girl. Red silk sheath dress. The neckline reaches almost to the waist and is divided on the right side to mid-thigh. She saw her purse thrown on the table. What the fuck? I have to go, and you threw away all my things. She started collecting everything and I shouted. Oh, no, you will not do this. You are not going anywhere. Now shut up and sit the fuck out. She trembled and said, I don't belong to you. I can do whatever I want. Yes. Well, then I can too. How do you like it? I reached out and grabbed the low neckline of her dress, ripping it down. Suddenly, she found herself practically naked standing in an open cup bra, a French lace garter belt, and a lace top of smoky grey seamed stockings. She screamed and wailed. My dress. No, this is not your dress. I bought it for our 25th wedding anniversary, along with most of the underwear you wore. If you go anywhere tonight, you won't wear this dress. Then my cell phone rang. Hello, Dave Collins. This is Mary Strathmore. I'm sorry to tell you, but you were right, and reported the car stolen. I bought the car for him and it's registered in my name. They stopped him about five minutes ago. He claimed that he was my husband and that he had the right to drive the car. She chuckled in a tense voice. They called me and told me that he said he was my husband. I heard him in the background as I loudly told the cops that this was impossible. My husband is in Boston. The bastard gasped and said he needed a lawyer. I have to go down and fix the mess. He's arrested, and the car is confiscated. Tell your wife, I'll come get her next time. We were talking on speakerphone as soon as I realized whose call it was. Judith gasped and screamed. What did you do? David, damn you. Just at this time, my children ran in. Dad, what's going on? Mom, are you okay? Dave Jr. asked. My daughter, Haley, burst into the room and approached her mother. Are you okay? Mom, what happened to your dress? Your father tore it up. Death glares turned towards me. What the hell, mom, what have you done? Tell me, tell them why. Judith, walk straight. Why do you have 12 packs of condoms in your purse? Are you going to make water balloons or something? I don't know where they came from. They are not mine. Judith said in an almost inaudible voice. And where were you going? Sexy weekend without my husband. Isn't that what you meant? I can do what I want. This is my body. As soon as it was said. Judith realized what she had said. In front of your children, in a quieter voice, she said, Well, that's my business. Young Dave rolled his eyes and went to the kitchen to get something to drink. A few minutes later, he returned with an envelope. Here, Dad, it's addressed to you. 
he looked at his mother with contempt on his face. Judith screamed and jumped up from the sofa. The remains of her dress falling to the floor. Don't read this, she screamed. Haley rushed to help her mother cover herself. Shut up Judith and sit back. I open the envelope and read out loud. My dear husband my sister is caring for her mother and needs some help. I'm going to be with them this weekend and will be home Monday evening. Kisses and hugs, Judith. The children looked at each other and did not know what to think. I realized that she had written the note before she came face to face with me. Her confusion and panic would be her downfall. Then as if the fates were eating popcorn and watching the show, the front doorbell rang. And before Michael could open it, Judith's mother and father burst in. Judith, are you okay? Ask her mother. Her father roared, what is going on here? Judith fainted. Hello, mom and dad. Welcome to the center of the shitstorm. Your daughter just managed to ruin our marriage and probably ruin her life and career. I caved. Her mother and my daughter tried to revive Judith while her father slowly boiled over. I brought them up to speed on what had happened, and the atmosphere became colder and colder. About this time, Judith came to her senses and looked around. Historical, she begged her mother to help her. Help, do you need help? How about calling your sister for help? You were going to help her with your mother. Maybe she can return the favor to you. With these words, I handed the note to her father and dialed her sister's number. While he was reading aloud, the phone answered. Hello, is this David? Yes, Mavis. How are you? How is mom doing? She's alright? Oh, yes, she's doing well. Judith is really very helpful. I don't know what I would do without her. Can I talk to her, please? Oh, well, she's busy right now. How about if I ask her to call you back after some time? Mom grabbed the phone and growled at her second daughter. This is not necessary, you self-processed asshole. Mother, her sister screamed in hysterics. Judith couldn't stand it again and collapsed on the floor. Now she was almost completely naked in front of her children and parents. Do not bother checking on my health. Mavis, she ended the conversation to the muffled cries of her second daughter. About this time, my phone rang again. David, this is Jerry. You were right. I got a search warrant for seven rooms at the Marriott Hotel. We searched the area using a missing persons warrant that I sworn in and found twelve more people, including my wife. Three male doctors, four female doctors, four nurses, and another female member of the HR team, and my wife. I'm so sorry. Dave, really sorry, me too, Jerry, but it is what it is, thank you. I turned to my future ex-wife. Go upstairs and put on something decent and get out of my house. She is a, a standing position and turned around to climb up. Then she stopped and said, please don't throw me away like this. Oh, you mean you ruined our marriage with your it's my body. I'll do what I want nonsense. I have been tempted many times. I could have sex with a little waitress at the diner where we used to have coffee after the night shift. I could have gotten a woman at the Lincoln dealership where we bought the car. Hell, even your own sister was hitting on me, but I was in love with you. And this is the gratitude I receive. Get out of my life. She completely lost her composure, turned and ran upstairs, losing her high-heeled shoe along the way. Silence reigned in the living room. Then my daughter said, I'll go and make sure she doesn't do anything stupid, Dad. Judith came downstairs about 30 minutes later with her suitcase, dressed in jeans and a sweatshirt. Her makeup and hair were a disaster. My eldest son stopped her on the way out. Don't worry, Mom, Adrian and I will plan your wedding so that it doesn't interfere with any of your sex festivities. It's not like you got an invitation maybe Dad can bring a new girlfriend. Adrian was Dave's serious girlfriend, but we didn't know how serious. Now we know. Completely lost Judith stopped at the front door. Her mother accompanied her to the exit. Her father turned to me. Is there any way to overcome all this? She clearly needs help, but nothing seems to have happened. She can talk to my lawyer about it. Remember, son, she loves you. I looked him straight in the eye and said, funny way to show it. The funny thing was that they all threw out the same crap. Adults all consenting do nothing wrong until they are caught.
It was then discovered that the good doctor had used the company's hospital credit card to rent rooms and pay for drinks and food for a weekend party. The hospital tried to avoid publicity, but eight participants were listed as being on duty or at some fictitious official seminar or hospital event. When this became known, several marriages broke up. This was not the first party, but it was definitely the last one. I filed for divorce but I'm basically a mild-mannered aircraft mechanic, do you remember? And I loved her more than my luggage, as they say in the film. So I let it drag on while she went to counseling, the kids were there for me and saw that at least I was making an effort, but it was so painful and it just happened like a bolt from the blue. How could I be so blind? United Airlines was sympathetic and I received extended medical leave. She lost her job along with everyone else involved. The good doctor was fired and then sued and prosecuted. Karan lost her job as did her deputy. There was a severe shot of nurses and several doctor positions opened up. My wife was the latest member of the sex club to be recruited as they were looking for fresh meat. She had been noticed for quite some time and Karan had been working on her, saying that she owed it to herself, that it would be a lot of fun. I'd never know. And besides many husbands get pleasure from their wives having sex with other men. It took six months but in the end, they convinced her. It took over a year, but I loved her and couldn't live without her. The old question would you be better off with or without her in your life? I watched her like a hawk. I constantly bombarded her with questions about whether everything was okay with us or not. She reported, and I listened to her carefully. It got to the point where it was driving her crazy, but listening to her therapist, her parents, and our children, she knew I was making an incredible effort, and she loved me. God, but I believed her. I sued the hospital and Dr. Strathmore. I had to join the queue after his wife's divorce suit, but I was ahead of the other injured parties. Together, we cleaned it out. The hospital was not very lucky. We, my kids and I, settled out of court for a six-figure sum in a sealed agreement. The remaining plaintiffs received a total of seven figures in sealed awards. My daughter-in-law was not welcome anywhere. I don't know if her parents have talked to her yet. Am I lucky with the result? With how it all came out, the fact that at the right time, my mind turned on all eight cylinders, and the support of my children and my friends, I didn't think I took my marriage for granted, but maybe I did. No more. It took over a year, but we are back, and our sex is damn delicious. Sometimes she sobs in post coital bliss and apologizes for all the trauma she has caused, but it's gradually getting better. And like I said, I love her but don't think I'm a weakling. About eight months after the shitstorm, I cheered the doctor on as he left the gym. I beat the living dog shit out of him, breaking three of his fingers and crushing one of his balls. His good looks no longer exist. Luckily for me, I was in the company of a police officer at the time. So life goes on. Yes. I know. Very tasteless. Cruel. Don't mess with my wife. And I'll stay meek. Subscribe to our channel so that your second half doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because the story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one. Out listening to the next one.